Well, welcome back. My name is Bill Bowen. I'm chief engineer for North American Broadcasting Company here in Columbus, and I'm a member of the uh, OM, OBMTC Conference Planning Committee. So any complaints, talk to somebody else. So hope you enjoyed lunch and time with our exhibitors. Thanks again to the Telos Alliance for sur their sponsorship of the lunch. Our afternoon IT breakout session entitled Network Stepping Stones, How to IP Enable Anything, presented by Joe Stack of Stackly Devices. Now, I've known Joe for, what, 35 years, something like that. Joe and I are both graduates of Ohio University in electrical engineering. Joe graduated cum laude, and I graduated in the 10% of the class that make the top 90% possible. So that's why Joe will be presenting to you today, and I'll be sitting in the back playing on my iPhone, OK? Oh. <laughs> Joe established Stackly devices to create interface electronics and unique specialty items that are used at broadcast stations, research labs, and factories. That's pretty cool. He's also the engineering supervisor at WCBS News Radio 880 in New York. He previously worked at DSI RF Systems, Modulation Sciences, Capital Cities ABC Radio, and Ohio University's WOUB Radio. Joe has enjoyed more than 30 years in broadcast engineering, equipment design, and manufacturing. He's a past presenter at the SPE workshops, NAB radio show, and IEEE RF symposium. He's SPE certified as CSRAE, 8VSB, and CBNT, and he holds a patent for consumer product. His ham radio sign is N2JOE. So I'm guessing the FCC didn't find out about that uh, modified two meter rig <laughs> doing rock and roll on top of Boyd Hall. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're pleased to have Joe here today to share several IP networking modules and how to effectively use them. Please welcome Joe Stack. Thanks, Joe. Well, I'm, I'm excited to be here, and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I'm excited to talk about things in broadcasting, and especially I get excited about the different equipment that you can work on in broadcasting. So in today, we'll talk about how to put something on the LAN or on the internet, how to IP enable it. So what does IP enabled mean? Well. The first thing, the device can be assigned an IP address. It has to be able to be found on the network. It can serve up a web page or deliver an email message. And it has to comply with the IP protocol, of course. Otherwise, it wouldn't be compatible with the network. These are things that are not easy to do from scratch. So what you can do is you can use an IP enabling module. Now, with these modules, it's not necessary to write any firmware. That's all been done for you. Uh, the protocol stack is built right into the brains of the module. There's a processor inside. And the manufacturers of these modules provide quick start guides so you can get things up and running rather rapidly. And these are also referred to as IP design platforms. So the benefits of using a modular approach is that it helps you understand the device pretty quickly. So it makes it the best way to approach IP enabling anything. You don't have to spend a lot of time building something and then deciding if this is not really going to work. You can pretty much evaluate it right out of the box when it comes from the manufacturer. So off-the-shelf modules are pretty much the way I would suggest go to go if you're going to want to do this. So. If you need a spare, all you have to do is buy another module. You don't have to spend time building a second device to keep a spare on the shelf. And another benefit is that the manufacturers provide the firmware and the software updates if they're needed for the device. And the, the manuals are really pretty good. They provide integration guides and user guides and programming guides for the devices, along with examples on how to do things. And learning by example is a, is a really good way to go, as you may have discovered. So we're going to take a look at three different modules that are out there. The first one is made by Brick Electric, the BEM100. Uh, it's basically a password-protected IP switch. 
The second one is made by a company called Landtronics, and it's, it's their Export Pro module. Um, it's quickly used on email, or uh, used for email with just a simple closure. And it also has top-notch security as well as SNMP capabilities. And the great part about the Export Pro module is that it is as long as three RJ45 connectors end-to-end -end and the same width, so it's quite tiny. And the third uh, device we're going to look at is from Easy Web Links. It's their module. And that actually provides a browser interface for control and status. And we'll take a look at actually how to set up a web page so that you can look at an analog voltage, push a button, and uh, see a relay turn on and turn off. So you can get telemetry. The first one, the Brick Electric BEM100. Take a look here. Uh, there's a couple of relays on board. So you get two sets of Form C contacts. So you get a normally closed, common, normally open. And then here's your network connection. And you bring uh, 5 volt power into it. It takes about 100 milliamps or so. As you can see, it's, it's quite tiny. It would fit inside something easily. And you get it just like this when you buy it. It, it costs about $49 for, for this board. Now on here is a processor here that handles the uh, physical layer of the Ethernet. This is made by a company called WizNet. And then there's a, um, a PIC microcontroller here that they've programmed to handle everything else. And it comes programmed from the factory. All you need to do is uh, take a look at the manual, hook up power to this thing, and go in with the browser to its assigned IP address, and you're connected to the module. We'll look at some of the things the module can do. And literally, when you take this thing out of the box, you can turn something on and off with it in a matter of about 20 minutes sitting on the bench with it. So it works by uh, HTTP control, which is right on the browser URL line. You can control it right from there. It gives you a response back on, the, on its web page. And uh, it will work with any browser. Uh, I've, I've checked uh, three of them, and it seems to work OK even with different versions. It's just bringing text back, so it's not heavy duty with graphics or anything like that. And you can set it for DHCP, or you can use the static IP availability on the module. It can be password protected, and it's supplied with the default uh, IP out of the box, the 192.168.1.105. So let's look at some of the control function examples. And in the notes on this, I put uh, a whole lot of the manual in there on it, so you can take a look at it when you, uh, when you download this from the site. But for instance, they've called the relays channel 0 and channel 1 programmers do it that way. So if you go in and write in your command line, you type in 192.168.1.105 slash on zero, the relay turns on. And uh, it gives you a response of on zero back in your browser, so you know that that happened. Equally, you can turn it off. Same thing for the second relay, channel one. You send the on command, it tells you that it's on. Send the off command, it tells you that it's off. So there's your real quick switch. And um, as you can see, as we get a little farther here, you add a password to it, then it would be very difficult for somebody to turn something on that you have enabled with this, or if you have it behind your firewall. And you can also turn the relay on with a defined time. So if we want the relay to turn on for just 10 seconds, we send the IP address with a slash on relay 0 equals 10s. It turns it on for 10 seconds, and then it turns it off. And if you want a shorter time, you can put milliseconds in. That would be a pretty quick relay pulse, but you could do that. And you can also use a password. So uh, let me explain. The, the folks that made this module, they actually went in, and they programmed the microcontroller to recognize commands coming right in with the with the HTTP control line with the address. So, and so to input a password, you send its IP address slash PW equals and whatever the six digit password is that you want to put in. 
and that will set the password and it doesn't return anything when you do that so then you must enable the password so I thought about this and maybe you might forget the password it's okay because you can always disable the password if something like that happens and I haven't had the opportunity to forget the password yet so but I'm sure there's some kind of a reset on the board itself you can see that there's a programming header there there were like six little dimples where they programmed it there's probably a way to reset the micro or to download the the flash back into the micro so and then you have to send slash service question mark pass, password equals start to start the password service and once you do that your password protected and the warning if your password's not correct it just won't do anything so uh, it's it's very simple you can get some control out of it the drawback is you don't really have a, a lot of hooks into it at this level to know what's going on it's just kind of a bang bang it's either on or it's either either off but I've put these in into a little box before and it's made things quite simple and um, as an old boss of mine used to say quick and dirty so I never thought that I would be able to apply that to IP enabling something but it does work in this case so then you can also go in if uh, for instance you have this on the other side of a router through some kind of a managed switch you can actually go in and set a web port with one two three four five being the the new port and uh, it will actually respond to you when you change that and uh, you'll have to include the port here as you see with a colon after the IP address to do all of the commands that we that we went through previously but you can you can put a port on it so that makes it a little more useful for you especially if you have it in a system where you might have a VLAN or you might have things uh, you probably do have things segregated where you have control in different areas sound good like a kind of yeah yeah you'd have to guess the port and then you'd have to guess the password so you'd be guessing for a while. The second module is the Landtronics Export Pro module. I had mentioned uh, the, the fact of its length, and I think I actually got the length just a little too long because it's more like two and a half uh, times as long as a standard RJ45. You can see here I got a ruler down here at the bottom of it, and this is right here is where the RJ connector plugs in, and then standard one probably ends about right here and it ends back here so it's about two maybe 2.2 .2 times as long and this is the rj45 end view see here you've got your uh, indicator lights for uh, physical link and then for data so it looks the same sticking out the back of of a product or, or your piece of equipment and it uh, still only has eight pins on the bottom of it so they were able to sandwich everything inside this unit you see here we've got uh, its MAC address here on the outside so eight pin connection uh, pins to connect to here on the bottom now for you to use this when I initially used it I didn't get an evaluation board I got the module and then I took some mini grabber clips and I went right on these pins this is pin one and this is pin two and I went ground and hot that's the connection so it's ground in 3.3 volts and that's how I fired it up initially being very careful to make sure I didn't mess up the pins on it but what you can do is you can get a carrier board and you can solder this right on it and you can attach to little eyelets there and do it that way and at that point I would suggest putting your 3.3 volt regulator right on the board because that is probably one of the only drawbacks except for the fact that it does get a little warm on this is that it has to run on 3.3 volts and I think that was something uh, one of the things that they had to sacrifice when they were designing it because it is so tiny there's so many things jam-packed in there so basically what it is is it's an embedded serial to Ethernet server and um, Lantronics designed this to enable serial devices to talk over lands and, and over the internet so you've got some some legacy equipment you put these in it and you, you program them to talk to each other I mean, you could even put a pick or something else on them to, to drive them 
and that would allow them to communicate over over the internet so the drawback there I mentioned 3.3 volts only there is a uh, set of configurable pins um, there's three configurable pins and those pins are also shared with things like the serial clear to send request to send uh, and other handshaking pins on there depending on what you want to use them for but if you just have this thing standing alone you hook up power you hook up uh, one of the configurable pins and you pull that configurable pin to ground and it'll send an email so it's it's that simple on this module after you get it hooked up and it, it does have a reset pin as well so they recognize the fact that this thing might need a reset from time to time which most microprocessor things do I mean they could they could stove themselves up and then you're stuck there's a piece of software called the device installer that you run in Windows and what it does when it opens is it goes out and looks for the Landtronic devices you have on your network and finds them for you so you don't have to find them and it lets you know what the IP address is and what the Mac is for that Landtronics device so to take a look at what they actually put inside here's the interface that that we talked about we've got the ground the 3.3 volts a reset pin serial data in and out and then these are the configurable configurable pins that's what the CP1 CP2 and CP3 are for and those also have uh, the serial data handshaking on them too depending on what you're using this this particular export pro for and so they got the filtering inside this box this DSTNI is the DS tiny they call it processor that Landtronics makes and way back when they used to offer that processor all by itself and an application note on how to get yourself on the internet with this thing and this has been like I don't know 15 years ago and I had looked at it once and it was just way more than I wanted to deal with at the time so I decided to wait I didn't do any experimenting at that point in time but it's got a clock on board and flash and uh, integrated magnetics and the whole nine yards so that you're ready to connect up to that cable that leaves the end of the connector and this uh, module has gone through all of the FCC testing and all the CE testing and all that so it's ready to be integrated into something you don't have to test your unit or, or, or be afraid that it's going to interfere with anything it's in a metal shell the whole nine yards and they have an integration guide that just kind of gives you it's about four pages that shows you what you really need to know to get it running and then the bottom of the unit this is the real unit and then a diagram over here showing you how the pinout works odd pins here on this side and then evens over on this side another description of what the pins are uh, in detail circuit ground on one 3.3 volts on two then you got a reset you don't have to use it it's pulled high internally the data out is um, serial data out and data in is the serial data in that's configurable then the rest of the pins uh, six seven and eight here they're basically configurable pins one two and three but as you can see you can use CP1 for flow control or programmable in and out for the um, configurable pin you can use CP2 for modem control or CP2 can be a programmable in or out and the same here for CP3 it can be a programmable in and out you can use it for the for the DCD or the uh, the clear to send on the, on the serial so what happens when you open this thing up uh, the software the device installer it looks to find the Landtronics device and it will find it and it found it here at this address and I think this is big enough for everybody to see I mean, so it found it and it lets you know here what its IP address is and what its hardware address is 
okay? And its status, it says it's online, so it recognizes it and it's ready to go. When you choose, what you can do is there's various things that, that you can do in this device installer, GUI, and you can choose device info, the configuration records, status records, you can talk to the thing through Telnet if you'd like to, or you can do web configuration. You can do web configuration once you know the web address using a browser, but it's pretty easy to do it right here. When you choose the tab, it shows you the IP address, okay? Then you come over here and you just click this green button and it connects it to the device. And then you can see all the configurations inside the device. It also asks you for a username and a password and there's a default in there that you have to use to get into the configuration. And so here's what you'll see. Export Pro, screen comes up. You have all of these choices. See, this is where we were on the previous slide, and this is what came up once we logged in to the web configuration. So on the left side, you'll see all of these different things that you can take a look at. Now, this, uh, this Export Pro is fully loaded with all of the security, uh, that you need on the, on the internet. Everything's in here. Um, what I chose here was, it's kind of hard to do this without uh, actually demonstrating it, and I have the third device I brought it uh, for, for, for live demonstration, but this one I wanted to show it here just so that you can see it's, it's pretty similar with the exception that this Export Pro is actually made to like be integrated immediately into a product, so it's got everything in there. But if we go into email configuration, it gives you all kinds of description here about what you need to fill out. Now, if you scroll this down, you see the current configuration that's actually inside. So you can change it at the top of the page, and then down at the bottom, you see currently what's there. And as I go to the next slide, you'll see this is what we see at the top of the page, okay, on the upper part of the screen. And then the lower part of the screen, you see the current configuration. And in the email, I was using my cable modem at home, so I have, uh, I have my Comcast address in there. Um, for the email, you can go in. You put in who you're going to send an email to. I send it to myself. You don't have to fill the CC field. Um, you put who it's from, reply to, just like you're filling out an email form on something that you might use in Outlook, say, for instance. And uh, subject, Export Pro was triggered. It's going to let you know. And then what happens, you can put in a text file that actually resides on the system, and you can add some details in there about what's going on. You can give information about what unit this is and that sort of thing, so that when you get that in the text of the email, you know what sent it and, and why it sent it. You have to add your domain in here. You can choose your port priority, the whole nine yards. And this trigger email send, this determines what actually sends the email. So in the trigger email send over here, this is the configurable pin group. So um, some of the groups are, well, one of them is email trigger. Another group is the fact that it received a serial detect. It can send an email on that if you want to know when something like that happens, if you've got it set up as a as a serial to Ethernet. So the trigger email send is email trigger, and zero is the first uh, configurable pin. So in that setup, it's zero, one, and two for the uh, configurable pins. So that's how you would do something like that as far as just setting up email in this unit. And you can see as we've scrolled down, you can see in here you can do um, point-to-point -point protocol here. You can set up SNMP. It allows you to configure this little device as an SMP agent. And when a, when a trap gets hit with some kind of an error, it'll contact the SNMP manager. And, and Tony talked about that earlier in the other session. And it'll say, hey, I got, I got something for you. Check it out. It'll let you know that something's there. So you can do that with this 
uh, Export Pro device. You can also use uh, Secure Shell and SSL. And it will also allow you to go in and take a look at the syslog and see what happened, like what's been going on on this module. It'll, it'll bear its soul, tell you what time it happened, what happened, and, and what could be wrong, that sort of thing. So it's, it's got all the good stuff in it. And you don't have to put little probes on to test it. You can get the demo board from them. Um, not that I didn't want to spend the money, but I didn't want to spend the money right away. I wanted to check it out first to make sure that I was going to be able to use it. So I didn't get the, uh, the valve board, but I probably will. You can see that it plugs in right here and uh, has a little area for you to do prototyping. And if you're just doing one thing, you might just want to install this right in the unit and you're done, whatever you're, whatever you're enabling. Yes? This one is um, this one is sixty dollars for the module. The board itself, this this business runs about one hundred and fifty to one hundred and seventy-five with a module on it. So um, that's what you got. So it's 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 pretty inexpensive to get yourself going, depending on what you're going to do. Yeah, that, well, three, you, you would want to put on a 3.3 volt regulator, some three terminal regulator for that. Yeah. yeah you can get them for probably under a buck. And uh, on that, you normally would want to put a, at least a 0.1 capacitor on the input and output just to keep it stable and put it as close to the part as possible. Yeah, I think it might draw about 150 milliamps. Because it's only 3.3 .3 volts and it's it's cooking in there. It's running at 25 megahertz, so it'll get a little warm. So we do have one of the, these engineering trade-offs with it. So one of the things that that I've done with this is I put together a little regulator on a little terminal board, a 3.3 .3 volt regulator, and I powered the thing by. Now don't laugh, a six volt lantern battery because most of the flashlights I have now take, you know, they're LED so they don't take lantern batteries anymore. So I had a couple sitting around and I was like, I'm going to use that because I needed it to be next to my modem and I thought, you know, I'll just, and it worked. I mean, I ran the thing for a few hours and the battery was still fine. So, plus I'd had that lantern battery for a while. It was from Radio Shack and I figured I might as well use it up. So now we're on to the third module. Anybody have any other questions on this one? Okay. This is the uh, Easy Weblinks module, and I actually brought it uh, today here. I have it plugged in here, and this is its little eval board. This eval board is about $129, and um, on this one you have to buy the module separately, and that was that was $50 for the module itself. This module as we'll see, has a little different kind of a connector on it. It's got one of these 10th uh, inch header connectors. So there's the end view where the cable goes. It's got a little bit of support here where a screw comes up through the, through the evaluation board, and then it plugs in back here with this socket header. And there's two versions. There's a 5 volt, which this one is, and there's also a 3.3 .3 volt version. So how does it work? Well, it, it's, an, it's an embedded uh, IP device that's designed for you to plug in, program, and use almost immediately. And this one uses HTML to program it. Uh, there is an interface, a uh, piece of inter interface software that you can use, and it's called the Easy Web Links IDE, the Integrated Design Environment. And it's uh, very similar to what we just saw. It's not as involved in some ways, but it is in other ways as far as the programming capabilities. You can do a lot of uh, a lot more capabilities. It's it's more for for like the hobbyist and the experimenter. This board is because it doesn't have all of the heavy duty security that the Landtronics one does. But I think it's a, it may be a faster start for for some people depending on on what your preference is. 
No other programming language is necessary except the HTML. So the bottom view is actually sockets and not a pin. So you can see that these are just uh, these, these standard headers. And here's a caricature of it showing that this thing is jam-packed with parts on both sides. Now this has a microchip part in it. And we take a look at the pins. We can read those there. Important pins here to start out with is you've got ground and power supply. There's a reset pin. Ah, they realize this thing's going to need to be reset at some point too. So that's good. All of the pins can be digital inputs or outputs. All of the first 11, that is. If you look on here, the first five can be analog inputs if, you, if you'd like them to be. And then there's four special pins here. You've got the clock and the data pin for an I squared C. And that's important if you want to use it to read temperature off of a little temperature device, a little three-legged temperature device that, that talks I squared C, which there is one on this board. And then you've got a uh, serial data transmit and a serial data receive on, on pins eight and nine. And the interface. So that's that's helpful in your in your R&D with that. And then the temperature sensor is here, the RS-232 port. And this allows you to either enable the temperature sensor or disable it. And the same with the RS-232 port in case you want to use those pins for digital inputs and outputs. So you can actually remove them without doing any soldering. And this is a in-circuit programming deal here. There's a cable that comes with it that you can plug into this jack and, and do serial programming if for some reason you've wiped this or need to reprogram this, this device. It'll let you do that. There's some glue logic here in this uh, microcontroller. You can also hook, uh, hook up an LCD unit to this if you want to display some text. Um, and then you have some probe points here and there's a little ribbon cable that comes with it that you can plug into this header so you can go into uh, they, they call it the host but you can go into another unit where you have access to all of the pins here that come out of this unit but it's on another board so you can expand it without actually tearing up this board or soldering to it or anything like that so it's pretty handy and um, here are all the descriptions that uh, we just talked about. There is a reset button on board. A power adapter comes with it, so it will need external power because you've got to light up the LEDs and things. And uh, there's the temperature sensor. ICD is the uh, in integrated circuit development. LED connector there, we talked about that. Yeah, so everything, uh, everything is called out here. And this is for completeness, so you have a uh, when you actually take a look at a, at a copy of the presentation, you'll know what, what the board is and what the call out is on everything like that. Okay, so now we can go back to the web page for control and monitoring. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this. I think I am. There we go. And I'm going to open up the actual uh, easy web links, the application. So you get this when you open it up and it's like, my God, what do you do with it? Well, the first thing is you come over here and everything's grayed out. So don't worry about all these right now. This is one of these things where um, you, the more you play with it, the more you learn, you really can't break anything once you get it. If you're, if you're planning on messing around with this, you just kind of have to go in. And uh, if you know a little bit of HTML or you know a lot or you don't know any, you can, you can find your happy medium in here just by looking at the examples that they give you. And the example that we're going to do here, this, I have all the HTML code in the notes. So you just need to pull that and copy it. And you can, you can use all that. That's all in there for you. So you take a look at the target. It says no de device selected. So you select device. And you'll see that here it is. Uh, serial number 87771 is available. It's at this address. We're going to choose it. And then I want to open a project. 
And I'm going to open a project that I already did that you see here. Uh, I put it together for you. It's a, it's a demo. There we go. Now what you see is, oh, son of a gun, forgot about that. Sorry about that. There we go. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. So now what you see is you see these things here. And um, what got programmed was that I went in, that serial number that you saw on that piece is part of the read ID. I'm just going to call these out first. OK, OK. You know this is live. What did it do? OK, let me try something here. No, it's not going to. This is bad news. Hang on a second. I think, I think I need that reset button. No, it must be Windows. What's that? <laughs> oh, this is horrid. Can you close the browser? No, that's what I, I tried to do that, but the browser is not letting me. Oh, this isn't the browser. This is the firmware. The, I'm sorry, the software for the easy web links. But I can open a browser, and let me see if I can go. Let me see if I can go to it. One nine two one six eight. Uh, oh, it's got it in there for me. There it is. Okay, so it's it's there. Um, see if I can get the status to go from off to on by pressing this button. Okay, so Windows must be confused. You see, the status went on, and an indicator turned on here. So let me see. Let me change the telemetry well above two volts here, and let me see what happens. Let me kick it. Okay, the bo the uh, the board is working, but something's up with my easy web links. Let me see if I can just. But I don't. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I'm not touching anything. This is very weird. It worked. It worked okay before. Something behind it. All these engineers got scared, man. <laughs> so, so what you would do here is you would go in, and yeah, this is escape. Just in case, is it thinks? No. Free control program. This program is a free download. Yeah, yeah. It, it had been a while since I purchased this and and actually used this evaluation board, but I was able to go online and download it anyway. They didn't ask you. I think they may have asked you for your email address and your name and your company. Um, and what happens is they, they do send a CD with this, but I always go online because you get the latest stuff. The thing about the CD that they send, I always look at it because they give you examples and things like that in there. And so they give you a complete HTML uh, to show you how to do uh, the frames and the buttons. OK. Something crashed, and is it, it's OK now? Oh, I hope so. I hope it does. I'm sorry, everybody. Oh, this is more fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for my computer. I wasn't leaning on anything, I promise. So what happens in, in here, if you actually go into, into HTML, you can put in this frame that you see right here. Oh, wait. There it goes. It closed itself. Perfect. OK. So let's see. 
Let's get it. Yeah, and I made sure everything was closed. Maybe it didn't like me selecting that target again. That could be. Okay, let's hit this demo. That may have been it. Because the target was already locked in. So here it is. Okay, so what you can do is you can actually go in here when you do your setup, and you can insert a table. Like, for instance, you, you insert a table, you can choose on the table the number of cells and the number of rows and the number of columns, the whole nine yards, and that ends up being right here. And then you can fill your text in here, okay? You put your text right in there. These buttons show up as an execute executable key or a read key. So the read ID is what you would put in to read the ID of the device. And that ID of the device, if you take a look at, yeah, this may have been, I'm not going to select the device anymore because this thing may be kind of freaking out on that part. The read temp F0, the temp F0 is actually what that I squared C bus is and it'll re it'll pull the temperature off of that for you. So you see the I squared C bus is somewhat complicated, but you don't have to worry about it with this because all of these hooks go right in and grab it and they it, it knows what you are looking for. And as far as the editing goes, you can go straight into the HTML here. And this HTML is set up when you put in the the read the ID or the read the temp F0. And you can see as I scroll down here and all this I put in the presentation in the notes. You can see the fact here with the uh, with the metadata, the HTTP refresh. Every 60 seconds, the web page is going to refresh itself. So you can change that to every 10 seconds, for instance, if you want to see the temperature or the voltage change faster. And then we come down here, and you can take a look at all the text that's in there: the temp tally text, the Stackley Devices text. And then as you as you scroll down. Farther, you can take a look here, and you can take a look at the read ID, the pin one analog voltage. Uh, there's a set in there for read the email and send it to, and that's part of the of the setup in there that's programmed in the in the device that you program in. So all of these things can be changed right here in this HTML code. If you delete these, then what you see in the visual interface, that first tab that we looked at also changes. And in here, you can see that we're using the method is post to turn the uh, push button on and turn the push button off, which lights a corresponding LED on here, depending on whether you decide that's going to be LED 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So all that's available to you. And then what you end up doing is you go, just to summarize here, you create an image here. And what that does is that creates a file that has a .cds ending on it. Then you upload it. And it uploads it right into here through the network cable. And you're done. It's stored. The, it, it goes into flash memory. And you can unplug this and put this in your device, and, and you're ready to go. So I think I went over about four minutes. I blame my computer. And let's see, what did, uh, did we have? Anything of special interest here for you? Let's see. I need to make sure that there wasn't anything that in particular maybe left out. Oh, there was one. There was an item here. This um, Advantech makes an Atom 6000 series modules. These things are used in factories. They're inside their own housings. They're DIN rail mountable. And they're they're more expensive. They're a couple hundred dollars, but it's for like an industrial environment. If you're not sure this is going to work for you outside, if you need to put something outside in an ATU or something, you might want to take a look at those. Um, I've got references in here for you, the, the different websites. And um, advice from Abraham Lincoln. Thank you.